Welcome to Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. Are you hungry to hear more about our beautiful Savior Jesus? Well, the Bible declares that grace and peace are multiplied to us in the knowledge of Jesus. Join me for revelatory teaching, interviews with leaders in the body of Christ, and testimonies of God's goodness in your life. Thanks for joining the conversation to reveal more of Jesus to a hurting world today. That's God's heart toward us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he loves us. We're his children. He wants to bless us in every possible way. But like you said earlier, we have to be willing to receive it. Mm. Everything that he has for us, starting with salvation. But before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to our Christina Prayer Ministry sponsors who help support the mission to unite the body of Christ and fulfill the Great Commission with love. A big shout out to Gopher Ministries, who provides all of our equipment for our gospel events. Davis Financial Services, who does all of our financial accounting. Harvest Family Network, through which I am licensed and ordained. And Life Changing Productions, who helps put together evangelistic events to reach our city for Jesus. If you or your organization are interested in becoming a CPM sponsor, You can find out more information on our website at christinaperera.org. Do you have a loved one's special occasion coming up and don't know what to get them? Well, now you can sponsor an episode of Revealing Jesus in their name. And you can give them a special dedication message read on air. It makes a great gift. To find out more information, just go to christinaperera.org slash podcast. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. I am your host, Christina, and I am so excited to have you with me here today. I hope and I pray that you are doing well right where you are and enjoying the continuously flowing favor of grace pouring from our beautiful Savior and Father in heaven. I've got a great show for you today. I have an amazing leader in the body of Christ with me. He is a pastor at Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas for more than 20 years, and he has ministered to hurting people, sick people, in the world's largest medical center in Houston, Texas. And he is the author of God Heals, Eight Keys to Defeat Sickness and Receive Divine Healing. Welcome to the podcast, Steve Austin. Thank you, Christina. So great to be with you today. Oh, it's so good to have you with me. You know, anybody who talks about Jesus as the healer and still healing today is a friend in my book because people need to hear that. They need to hear how good he is and how he wants them well. So thank you. Yes, thank you. So good. Well, I've told our listeners so much about you. Is there something that you can share with them, maybe something personal just to help get to know you? Personal. Okay. I love to travel. My wife and I love to travel. We love to see God's creation and we love to experience different cultures and also love to work out. I'm a big kind of health buff and it just helps me to, you know, take care of my temple and feel my best and be my best for the Lord. And so I'm kind of an avid fitness person and nutrition and all that. So that's just a couple of personal things. Mm, I love that. That's awesome. That's so important. I need to get back in the gym this year. That's got to be one of my goals. I did get a new smoothie machine and I've been really enjoying that. So (laughs) good. Awesome. (laughs) That's my new start (laughs) to get more greens, right? (laughs) That's a good start. (laughs) Well, since this is revealing Jesus, I have to ask, how did you meet our beautiful Jesus? Amen. That's a good question. So my mom took me to church from the time I was a little boy and I grew up in church, you know, kind of denominational churches and didn't really know much about healing. That's kind of the interesting thing about my story. If you knew me the first 31 years of my life. I was probably the least likely person to write a book on healing because the churches I went to didn't teach anything about healing. Mm. And I was just kind of going to church and 
you know, doing the church thing. But I would say that I really, really developed a relationship with Jesus when after law school, I moved to Houston and I met my wife on a blind date. And we started going to church together and we were both kind of at the same place. We had kind of gotten away from the Lord in college and uh, me in law school. And we were just at the place where we just were ready to rededicate our lives to Jesus. So that's when I became super serious. I had kind of experienced the emptiness of the world and, you know, just a living without a personal relationship with Christ. And I was hungry for that. And my wife was too. And when we met and started going to church together and rededicated our lives, we just never looked back. I mean, it, we've been going hard for the Lord for, gosh, we've been married 28 years now. And so we started when we were dating. So it's been almost 30 years that we've been really, really going hard after Jesus. Mm, I love that so much. Isn't it the best living the Christian life in the kingdom? It's never boring. No, never boring. You know, people in the world think that Christianity, sometimes they look at us and they think we're squares or we don't have thought or whatever, but really it's the opposite. You know, the Christian life is a grand adventure. Mm -hmm. And when you do it God's way, it's a walk of faith and it's an adventure. He takes you places you never dreamed of. Mm -hmm. And it's the most incredible life. I don't know how people do it without Jesus, but I'm just glad I have Jesus. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can't live the Christian life without Jesus. <laughs> it just, right. It don't work. And the Holy Spirit, for that matter. I always tell people the Holy Spirit is not optional equipment. No, not at <laughs> all. Not at all. So good. Well, having a life with this living, loving Savior is amazing. You talked about in your book, God as healer yesterday, today, and forever. You know, he's the great I am. He never changes. Can you talk about the Lord's heart and his desire to continue to be healer for people today? Yes. Yes. Amen. Well, I want to take people back to Exodus 15, 26, second book in the Bible, where God said he identified himself as I am the God who heals you. He mm -hmm. called himself Jehovah Rapha in, in the original Hebrew language. I am the Lord who heals you. And, you know, that was a very powerful statement. God was saying, healing is not just something I do. Healing is who I am. He mm -hmm. said, I am the God who heals you. So it's not just something he does. Healing is part of his nature. Mm -hmm. He's always been that way. As you said, you know, God never changes. The Bible says there's no shifting or variation with God. He is the same. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. And so throughout the Bible, we see God healing. And then when Jesus comes on the scene, you know, um, the Bible says he is the express image of the invisible God. He came to earth um, not only to die for our sins, but to show us who God is and to reveal God's nature to us. And one of the primary things that Jesus did was heal people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you almost can't turn a page in the Gospels without reading a story about healing. And 13 times in the New Testament or in the Gospels, it says that he healed all. He healed them all. Everyone mm -hmm. that came to him for healing got healed. He didn't turn a single person away. So that's God's heart toward us. You know, he's our father. And any good father wants to see their children healthy and wants to see their children prospering. And God is the greatest father of all. So he wants his children healthy and prospering. And I'll just share this verse and then you can ask the next question. But third John one, two, God writing through the apostle John, it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your souls prosper. 
And I believe that's God's heart toward us, for us to prosper in every way, to be healthy, not only physically, but in our souls. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And, you know, I've been through my own health journeys and things like that. And I was actually meditating on this a few days ago. And I was thinking, Lord, I sought you for healing, but what I found was the healer. Amen. And it's so incredible. You know, I could tell you story after story of miraculous healing that he's done for me, that he's done for others. But what I realized is that he was more willing at times than I was even willing to ask for. One of my favorite moments happened I guess it was maybe a year or so ago, and I had gotten a vaccine, and this particular vaccine, it really hurts your arm, like you can't lift it. I mean, it was really painful. I felt like my arm was like 80 years old. It was terrible. Wow. And one of my favorite worship songs just happened to come on, and it was Carrie Job's Forever. What an amazing song. And I just started worshiping, because I'm just such a worshiper at heart. And he healed me. I didn't even ask for it. I mean, it was a vaccine. It was like a routine procedure. It was like no big deal. I didn't think I needed healing. And I came upstairs flapping my arms up and down like a bird saying, he healed me. He healed me. Wow. (laughs) Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, it's God's heart toward us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he loves us. We're his children. He wants to bless us in every possible way. But like you said earlier, we have to be willing to receive it. Mm. everything that he has for us, starting with salvation, but but all the promises of God, we have to work with God and receive those promises and believe for those promises. Absolutely. You know, when I was contending for healing from Lyme and multiple autoimmune diseases and this blood cancer disorder thing, one of the biggest things the Lord had to take me through was the renewing of my mind. And you talked about some of those things in your book. And I thought some key ones we could talk about today is you just hit one, I believe, that is very powerful. And that is we receive healing just as we receive salvation, just as we receive everything by the grace of God. We don't earn it. Right. And one of the places that the Lord had to really destroy in my mind was feeling like I wasn't worthy. And he had to give me a foundational gospel understanding of the finished work of Jesus and how I could receive it, not based on my own performance, but the performance of Jesus. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been ministering to the sick for 25 years. I've been a pastor for 23 years. So I've definitely ministered to thousands of people by now. And I would say that that's one of the biggest lies the enemy tells people. And Mm -hmm. one of the biggest stumbling blocks is making people feel like they're unworthy, like, you know, they haven't lived the life they should have lived or they haven't performed well enough and they haven't been a good enough person. And I see that over and over and over again. And that's why I put it in the book, because that's a huge stumbling block. If you believe that you're unworthy and, you know, God doesn't want to bless you, then you're not going to have the faith to receive it. Mm -hmm. So I just want everybody listening to know that that's a lie from the enemy, that it's not about what you've done. It's all about what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus paid the price for everything that God wants to give you. He already did the heavy lifting. He paid the price. He washed all your sins away. There is no unworthiness for those who are in Christ Jesus. Uh, The Bible says you are washed in his blood. And when God looks at you, he doesn't see your mistakes and failures. And he doesn't look at your performance. He only looks at you through the eyes of Jesus. And Mm -hmm. Jesus did it all. When he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished, he meant it. It is finished. He did everything. All we have to do is get in agreement with God and receive what he has for us. Amen. I love that you said agreement. I think that's key right there. 
We need to think like God thinks and see what God sees and say what God says. We need to see ourselves as clean, as forgiven, as holy, as righteous, as our righteousness is from him and not our own. Right. And those things right there help us receive more from the Lord. Yes. Amen. I just want to say one more quick thing about that. You know, the Bible says that God made Jesus who was perfect and without sin. He made Jesus to become sin and take our sins upon himself and gave us his righteousness, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so he took our sins. It's called the great exchange. He took our sins upon himself and he gave us his righteousness, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. And you don't get any greater righteousness than that. There's no greater righteousness than the righteousness of God. And that's what the Bible says we have been given in Christ Jesus. So that's why, you know, Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, talked about the armor of God. And one of those pieces of armor is the breastplate of righteousness. And it's so important for people to put on that breastplate of righteousness and understand that they are completely righteous, completely blameless before God in God's eyes and not receive any lies about guilt, shame, condemnation, or unworthiness. Amen. 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 You know, just that power of knowing your righteousness and There is no righteousness except the righteousness of God. The Bible says that all of our righteousness was like filthy rags. So we had to get somebody else's, right? Amen. That's right. That's the whole point. You know, our righteousness was as filthy rags to God. So he had to send Jesus down. But Jesus took all our unrighteousness. He took all our sins upon himself and washed us clean and gave us. He imputed his righteousness to us. It's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And so many people don't really understand that, Mm -hmm. but it's a very powerful truth that when we really grasp it, we will stop feeling guilt, shame, condemnation, and unworthiness. You know, another verse, the Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we have to be careful, too, that we don't bring condemnation if God's not condemning us. Right. And and the Bible actually says, if God doesn't condemn us anymore, then who can bring a charge against us? Amen. Amen. Yeah. I mean, you know, but the enemy is called the accuser of the brethren. Yes. And he loves to remind us of all our past sins and mistakes and failures. And he loves to just whisper in our minds that we're not good enough, that we're not worthy. And we just have to realize those are all lies. Mm -hmm. They absolutely are. You know, the enemy knows that if he can get you focused on yourself, he can defeat you. Right. But if you are focused on Christ and what Christ has done, he can do nothing with you. The Bible says that having disarmed principalities and powers And having nailed the handwriting that stood as an indictment against us to the cross, he destroyed the devil, the power that he has. That's exactly it. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are another translation of that same verse says that Jesus took away every charge against us. Mm -hmm. He took every charge against us and nailed it to the cross. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's the reason the Bible says in Hebrews that we have boldness to enter the holy of holies because of the blood of Jesus is sprinkled on the mercy seat in heaven and our sins have totally been washed away and we can enter the holy of holies. We can enter God's presence mm-hmm. and know that we are totally blameless and we are completely righteous before God because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love the throne of grace. What an amazing picture of God. Yes. The thing we have to understand about grace is that not one of us deserves it. Not one of us has earned 
the goodness that God has shown towards us. The Bible says that while we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. You know, I had this vision one day of the cross and I literally saw people spitting on Jesus and him just saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Oh, yes. man. Yes. Yes. It's so amazing. You know, God gives us what we don't deserve in mm-hmm. terms of, you know, he blesses us and he just keeps loving us. And he just gives us so many things that we don't really deserve, yeah. but he doesn't give us what we do deserve. He Amen. Doesn't, he doesn't Amen. Give us punishment. <laughs> That all those things that we do deserve, it's incredible, you know, and oh, it um, is. the word deserve is really not in his vocabulary with us. Mm-hmm. It's not about deserving or performing or earning or merit. It's about really, we're under a whole different paradigm and it's all about faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross and receiving the promises of God through Christ. Amen. Amen. I couldn't agree more. And those are powerful keys. And I think we covered a lot of stuff in your book. I love that you included some prayers in your book and you also included some of the names of Jesus throughout the scriptures. And I thought, how fun would it be to read some of those? Yes. Would you yeah. like to do that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that is in the chapter. So there's six keys. I'm sorry. There's eight keys in the book, eight keys to healing. And this is key number five, which is called praise precedes the victory. Mm-hmm. And the whole chapter is just about the power of praise. Mm-hmm. I don't think most people realize the power of praise and that praise is actually a weapon. Mm -hmm. And that praise invites God to invade your situation. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. God literally inhabits our praises. So when we start praising God, God comes into the room. God comes into our situation. You can feel the atmosphere shift when you start to praise. And it's because God's presence is there. Mm -hmm. And so I put these names, I put some of the key names of God, looking at it right here. There's about 20 names of God. And I explained what those mean. And then I listed all the names of Jesus. It's kind of amazing how many names of Jesus there are. Yeah. But the reason I put this list in here is to kind of help people praise him, just Begin to call out his various names, and that is going to remind you of everything that Jesus is and everything he does in your life. And uh, it's just a great way to get your praise going. And anyway, I'm going to read a few of these. These are just some of the names of Jesus. A rock of my salvation, the light of the morning, the lifter of my head, my rock, my fortress my deliverer, my strength, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my shepherd, my goodness, my shield, a friend that sticks closer than a brother, Lord of hosts, wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, my strength and my song, a shade from the heat, a refuge from the storm. I mean, when you start saying those names and you start just praising God, God, I thank you that you're my goodness. I thank you that you're my deliverer. I thank you that you're my strength. You are a shade from the heat. You are a refuge from the storm. When you start to say all those names, number one, it renews your mind because Mm -hmm. You can't be depressed and discouraged saying all those names and like understanding everything that Jesus is in your life. And then number two, like I was saying earlier, just shifts the whole atmosphere and God's presence begins to invade the room. And it's such a powerful thing. It is. You know, when I was contending for my healing, worship was one of the keys because it was so easy. And I like that you talked about this in your book 
to magnify the problem and not God. Yeah. When we worship, we're magnifying God and not the problem. And so even my neighbors, they, they would hear me, you know, praising and worshiping the Lord. And one of them said to me one time that said, if I ever get sick, I'm going to do what you did. <laughs> I'm going to stay home all day and I'm going to worship. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, I said, thankfully, I taught somebody something good. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, I think it's one of the most underutilized weapons in our arsenal. People would usually think about praise in terms of I'm at church with the worship team and we're singing worship songs or whatever. But really the most important time to praise God is not just on the mountaintop or not just in church, but when things are going tough in our lives, when we're, mm -hmm. we're experiencing challenges, when we're walking through the valley. I'm reminded of that story of Paul and Silas in prison. Mm -hmm. And uh, Roman prisons were rough. I mean, there wasn't any color TV and AC and, you know, <laughs> indoor plumbing and all that. It was stinky. It was dark. It was hot. It was just everything bad. And it says that Paul and Silas at midnight, I think that's significant because we talk about the midnight hour, you know, mm -hmm. that's the darkest time. At midnight, they began to pray and sing hymns. And the Bible says that an earthquake came as a result of them praising God and everybody's chains were loosed and they just like walked out. Mm. And, you know, there's so many other stories in the Bible. You can talk about Jericho, how they marched around and praised God. But on the seventh time, the walls of Jericho fell. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, the Bible says God is fearful in praises. Mm. And when we begin to praise God, I mean, he comes in, he does miraculous things. The enemy has to flee. And it's really, really one of the most powerful weapons in our arsenal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, when I was worshiping my way through this contending for healing and the Lord was renewing my mind. One of the most amazing things happened. I just happened to be faux finishing some of our kitchen wall. And this was about over 10 years ago when faux finishing was very big. <laughs> I'm dating myself right now. <laughs> but you know what? One day I was worshiping and I kid you not, the image of Jesus showed up on our kitchen wall in the faux finish. Wow. I Hallelujah. kid you not. It was so funny too, because my husband was the one who saw it. So he comes upstairs one Saturday morning and wakes me up and he goes, honey, wake up. Jesus is in our kitchen. I was like, what? What are you talking about? He brought me downstairs and sure enough, I kid you not, it looks like the face of Jesus in the kitchen wall. Wow. Hallelujah. And, and we've painted our kitchen since then, but I will not paint over it. So I've painted oh. a square <laughs> yes. around it because. Right. I wouldn't paint over it either. <laughs> I know. I can't paint over Jesus. I mean, that would be terrible. Yes. If we ever move, I'm going to cut the drywall out and take it with me. <laughs> Amen. I would do. I would do. Well, you know what? God can do anything he wants to do. And if he wants to show up on somebody's wall, you know, he's a supernatural God. He does supernatural things all the time. Yeah. Well, you know, it was amazing because I saw it as just an incredible gift that he was there with me. And for years, what I would do is I would take communion and I would look at that picture and I would make statements to my Goliath, my sickness at the time. Yes. And I would say to it, I'd say, you'd come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, God of hosts, the God of Israel whom you have defied, because yes. that's really what all sickness and disease, it's really defying God. It is. It is. And the enemy is seeing if you know what you have, who right. you have, and what's been done for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right on. Yep. The enemy will kick our tires <laughs> and, you know, and he's trying to see do we know our authority in Christ? Mm -hmm. Do we know what we have in Christ? And do we have the faith to receive 
what God has promised us. Mm, I love that so much. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Well, this has been so amazing. I would highly recommend this book for anyone who's facing sickness. There's so many good chapters in here. We could just go on and on and on. But is there anything burning on your heart that you'd like to say directly to our listeners today? I just want everybody listening to know that God loves you so passionately and so fervently. You can't even understand how much God loves you. And he has great plans for your life. And whatever it is that you have need of, whether it's healing or uh, whether it's a relationship that needs to be restored, a wayward child, whether it's finances, you know, God has the answer to every single situation that you face. And he wants to be the answer. He is your healer, your source, your provider, your protector, your counselor. He is everything you need him to be. That's why he called himself the great I am. He said, I am. Just fill in the blank after those two words. I am whatever you need me to be. And so I just want to encourage everybody that God loves you and he's got a great plan for your life and just believe him for it. Just believe him for it and trust God. And you're going to see God do some amazing things in your life. Amen. Isn't that the truth? You know, we all need to be reminded how good he is and how much good he wants for our lives. We live in this world that bombards us with the complete opposite every single moment and so we can't have enough reminders of that yes amen 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 well would you pray for our listeners pastor steve before we go i sure will i'd love to father god i just thank you for every person who listens to this podcast i thank you lord that they are your children created by you in your image and likeness. Lord, you don't create anything mediocre or less than. Lord, every person under the sound of my voice is created in the image and likeness of Almighty God. Lord, you put your DNA in us. You put seeds of greatness on the inside of every person that you created. Father, your word says in Ephesians 2.10, NIV version that we are your masterpiece. Every one of us is a unique masterpiece. There's no one like us in all the world. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that we're your children, that you love us with an everlasting love, that you have great plans for our lives. And I just ask you, Lord, to meet every need of every person listening, Father, whether they need healing whether they need a relationship restored, perhaps their marriage, a wayward child, Lord, whether they need finances, whatever it is they need, Father. Lord, you are everything. Lord, you are the great I am. You are everything we need, Father. And Lord, I ask you to provide all their needs, Lord. Heal their bodies, heal their souls, heal relationships. Lord, provide for your people, protect them, Father. And Lord, I pray that they would become everything you created them to be. They would fulfill every plan and purpose you have for their lives. And they would live the best life that you meant them to live, Lord. You said that you came, that we might have life more abundantly. So, Lord, I pray that every person under the sound of my voice would experience abundance and victory and peace in every area of their life. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for it all. And we receive it by faith with thanksgiving. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 I love it. Thank you. (laughs) Count me in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you so much, Steve. It's been so fun having you with me today. Yes, likewise. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Good. Well, I hope and I pray today's episode has blessed you. I will have links from today's podcast in the show notes. 
on cpnshows.com under Revealing Jesus with Christina Prayer or wherever you get your podcasts. There you'll find additional resources to connect with us and our special guest, Steve Austin. And don't forget to pick up a copy of his new book, God Heals. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. I hope today's episode has blessed you. Please subscribe, share it with your friends, and don't forget to sign up for our ministry mailing list for more encouraging content about our beautiful Savior, Jesus. Just text JESUS to 1-833-815-7778. That's 1-833-815-7778. Seven 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 eight, And of course, it's your turn now to join the conversation. Send me your burning questions, leaders you would like to hear from in the body of Christ, your testimonies, and more. Just click join the conversation in the show notes. And for more information about our ministry, visit us at ChristinaPereira.org. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless.